Well, hey everybody, Doug Rucker here with DougRuckerSchool.com and DougRuckerStore.com. By the way, our store is located right here in the Kingwood, Texas area. We're actually in Porter. So uh, we are your Houston, Texas pressure washing and soft washing supply store. So stop by and visit us anytime that you can. Hey, just wanted to real quick, I made a little post the other day with a Hudson float valve that I would thrown into the trash can. And so I just thought I'd do a little thing on float valves and what's available out there, the general pump one, the Job. Um, so let's get to that coming up next. Okay guys, so on float valves for I don't know, probably the last 20 years, 25, whatever. Um, I've been using nothing but the Hudson float valve, which is this one here. It's very common. Everybody uses it. But I just really, um, it was kind of like the only thing on the market, the only thing people knew about. And so that's what everybody used. And, and a lot of people still use it, and people get great results from it. But over the last couple of years, I just noticed they were pretty temperamental. They would work sometimes, sometimes they wouldn't. There's a, a float here that as the water rises up, it will push this float up and shut the water off that's coming from your hose that's connected to your hose reel. And so when it fails, water starts overflowing the tank um, I've been on jobs before where it would, you know, start working and then all of a sudden it would stop working. I see water shooting out of my breather tube um, on the tank. And so, of course, it just all runs down. It's not hurting anything, but it's just a pain in the neck to look over and see that we're wasting water and water's just flooding all over the place. Um, so I just kind of got tired of using these and about a year, year and a half ago, I went and searched um, for a better alternative. And so what I came across was these float valves. They're called Job float valves. They have a couple different models. They have one with a string um, that will lift a float up and shut it off. Um, I like this one. I don't like dealing with the little string with the float in it. This one does not have the string. It's just got an arm that is like this. And so as the water raises up, it lifts this up and will shut the water off. And this really allows a, a couple things. Um, it allows for more water flow getting into your tank. So it fills faster um, versus this one is very restricted. Um, not a whole lot of water will come out of the bottom of this and it really comes out like a waterfall. Um, this one allows much more water to come through the Job float valve. And so here's the one with the, uh, it's called the Mega Flow and it has this little string uh, that attaches to this float and the uh, mechanism inside is attached to this and so as this raises up and then hits the top of your tank or however you've got it set then that's what will shut the water off and um, just requires a little bit more um, finesse and making sure that you get the string at the right length and all of that kind of stuff. So that's kind of why I choose the Topaz because it's much easier um, to install a little bit quicker. We're going to show you that. I'm going to show you that in just a little bit. Um, so I like this one and then actual viewer a while back reminded me of this style. I used to use this many years ago, um, but then the Hudson came along and everybody started switching to it. And so of course I did because everybody was doing it. But this is a general pump float valve that works pretty much like a float in a toilet. Um, when the water fills up, it hits this float and raises the arm up and will shut the water off. So two good alternatives that you can use. Um, I use both of these in our rigs and both of them work equally as well. It's just a matter of uh, sometimes what I have on hand and what we can get through the supply industry. So I'll take a minute here uh, coming up next and we'll show you a little bit how we install these. 
Okay, guys, so when we're installing these, we're basically uh, tools that you need are, a, uh, of course, your uh, float valve that you're going to use. You also need a uh, bulkhead fitting for the size of the float valve that you're using, and then a hole saw and uh, whatever little plumbing fittings that you're going to use, however you're going to direct your water flow to your hose reel. So just remember that your hose, garden hose or your hose off your hose reel, or if you don't have a hose reel and you're just doing it manually, is going to hook up to the water supply on the home or the commercial property. And then that's going to feed the water to your tank. And that water is going to go through a float valve so that when the tank fills up, the water shuts off automatically. And then as you start using it and the water starts lowering, the float valve kicks back on and starts replenishing the water. That way, hopefully, you don't ever run out of water. But that, of course, always depends on the amount of water supply coming from that uh, faucet. So traditionally, like I was talking about on the Hudson float valve, you're going to have your Hudson float valve. I always recommend taking out the little filter that's in there. That will help. Um, one of the things you have to do when you do that is just make sure you check this, take this off from the inside of the tank every now and then, make sure there's no debris getting clogged up in this part of the float valve. And so then we have a one inch poly nipple that goes into the bottom of that. And from there we have a bulkhead. And so on this lid to a five gallon bucket, I'm gonna simulate this being your water tank. So what you would do is you would take your um, bulkhead and you put the inside part of the bulkhead is this part right here that has the fat gasket sitting down. And so you're going to take the bottom part of that, the female part thread, and fasten it onto the male pipe thread of the poly nipple. Once you've done that, then you're going to insert this through the hole that you've made with your one and three quarter inch hole saw. Got it labeled there for you so you can see. Hopefully you can see and it's not reversed. Um, and that's this right here. That's what a hole saw looks like. It's got a little drill coming through it and then the cutting blades here for you to drill your hole. So once you do that, then you're going to insert this through the hole in the tank. Then you're going to take and put this thin gasket on top of your poly nipple and then you're going to screw this down and this has to go one way the side that says tighten loosen with the words you want facing up and it's kind of a reverse thread and i put my hole too close to my edge of my top but i can get it down so once you've got that then you take a 90 or a straight, but usually it's a 90 poly fitting that's one inch threaded on one side. And then I use three quarter inch hose coming off of my hose reel. So the barb end is going to be three quarter. So this is a one inch to three quarter barb poly fitting. And so you screw that into the top of the bulkhead. Remember that you want to use some pipe dope to seal these threads. Don't you, you don't need to use Teflon. Just use that true blue. Um, and I've got some right here. You can get these off of uh, Amazon, but that's the type that I use right there. We use these on all of our Kingslinger fittings. Um, any type of plastic fittings, even metal to plastic, we use that. Metal to metal, we use Teflon tape and the lock seal. So once that's completed, then you're going to attach your three quarter inch hose over there, heat it up with a blow dryer or heat gun, and then hose clamp it. And the other end of this hose is going to the swivel off of your hose reel. And so that's what it would look like. This is facing down. This is facing up from your tank. So this needs to go at the top of the tank. Okay. So that's how you would do the Hudson float valve. So next I'll show you how to do the Job float valve. 
Hey, don't forget my monthly school, been doing it for 11 years now, is coming up May, I believe it's May 9th and 10th, but you can go to PressureCleaningSchool.com slash events and you can see the schedule there. I do it once a month and then every now and then we throw in some other uh, types of training. Don't forget the online video school with over 250, 260 uh, videos. Starts off with roof cleaning, house washing, concrete cleaning, um, property protection. You got four separate modules there. You can also take an optional test at $28.95 a piece if you'd like to for each one of those modules. It's not a necessity, but uh, a lot of guys take advantage of that so they can test what they're learning. But uh, PressureCleaningSchool.com slash join is where you can read all about that. And then again, pressure cleaning school slash events for our monthly hands-on training every month that we've been doing for the last 11 years. So check all that out. Okay guys, so on the Job float valve, you have to remember this is going to sit sideways in the tank. So it's going to be like this. If that's the wall of your tank, you're going to install it. And it's going to be inside the tank like this, not on the top like the Hudson float valve I just showed you. As a matter of fact, I'm going to show you how I install it in a minute uh, on this truck service body that we're finishing up for a customer out of Atlanta. That's the last thing I have to do on that build. And so I thought, well, I'll do that while I'm making the video so guys can see. But what you do with this one is you have the same thing. You have a bulkhead. Let me get my little fittings off here. And so on the inside part, this is going to go into your hole that you've cut. Okay. So it's going to look like this. And then you're going to take your bulkhead fitting, your slim gasket, and you're going to tighten it down. And on this one, since your fitting or the valve is sitting sideways in the tank like this you're going I'm going to use a straight and this is a three-quarter to three-quarter three-quarter threaded to three-quarter barb fitting because the bulkhead that I'm using is a three-quarter inch bulkhead okay and so for that fitting that bulkhead, I used an inch and three eighths uh, bulkhead or hole saw to cut that hole. That's a different size. Okay, so but basically, that's how it's going to look sitting inside your tank. This is the tank wall. This is the outside that the water is feeding into here, and this is your tank. And so the water fills up, and then this will lift as the water gets full. And again here you can see I wrote down inch and three eighths right here and that's for your three quarter inch size bulkhead that's the that's the whole saw size that you will need for that now when you're doing the general pump it requires a half inch fitting so you're basically doing the same thing you're drilling a hole for half inch and that's going to be the inch and a quarter inch and a quarter bulkhead fitting which is right there okay that's the size hole saw that you will use for a half inch bulkhead fitting and so this is going to pretty much mount the same way as we did the job float you're going to put your take this part off of your bulkhead a small gasket and then your Float valve goes on the inside part of the tank. Take the uh, small gasket, put it over the bulkhead like that. And then you're going to use, actually on this one, you're going to use instead of three quarter to three quarter, 
you would get a half inch barb to three quarter, I mean half inch thread to three quarter inch barb. And then that's how this one is gonna look on the inside of your tank. So as the water raises up, it raises this. When it gets to this point, the water start, stops flowing through here, okay? All right, so next I'm gonna go over to the truck build and get set up over there and show you how I actually install this inside a tank on the truck build. Guys, don't forget, stay tuned. Um, I've got uh, a little thing with Uniseal I'm gonna show you also. This would be a good time to do that. So stay tuned to, for that through the end. So guys, as you can see, I've already drilled my hole, so I'm going to take the lock nut, the spinning nut, and the small gasket off of my bulkhead fitting of my float valve because these two parts are going to go on the outside of this hole. So all I have to do, I have to stand up for this, is get the float valve down in the hole. And I'm going to take, sorry for the train, <laughs> and I'm going, going to put the little washer over that and then get this spinning on. I'm going to go reverse for tighten and it tells you on the top here which direction and then I'm just going to hand tight that real good, seal it up, make sure it's straight inside, it is. And then what I'm going to do is take my hose barb, threaded hose barb. I'm going to take a little bit of this true blue, and I'm just going to lift it up out. And I just normally kind of take it and rub it around the brush like that. If you get this on anywhere, rubbing alcohol does a good job of cleaning this up. And then I'm just going to take and screw it into here. As I'm screwing it, all of that dough gets buried down into the threads. And this does a great job of sealing it as well as making it hold and stick. So it's kind of like a sealant and a glue all in one. Okay, so that's done. Now all I have to do is run my hose, three quarter inch hose from here to my hose reel. And I'll show you that next. Okay, so for the hose on the tank, I'm just going to take my hose clamp, slide it over my hose. Then I'm going to take my blower, my heat gun. I'm going to heat this hose up just a little bit. doesn't take a lot um, unless it's really cold outside, but I just want to kind of warm it up. That makes it easier to uh, slide over the barb, and then as it cools, it helps to make it seal better as well. So we'll just slide that over on top. Now I'm gonna take my hose barb and I'm going to do the tightening of the hose clamp. And I'm using a 5 16 uh, nut driver to tighten that up. So that's complete there. And now we'll go to the outside of the hose reel. Okay guys, so on the outside of the hose reel at the swivel, I have a half inch threaded to three quarter inch hose barb. Because the swivel is half inch uh, female pipe thread, so I've got a half inch male pipe thread uh, to three quarter inch hose barb uh, fitting that goes on the hose reel. And so here's my hose coming from the tank that we just put on. Again, I'm gonna put my hose clamp on, hold it in place so it doesn't slide down. You have to get in the truck and get it. Again, I'm gonna heat the hose up just a little bit. And I've got this pretty much where it should be pretty taut. I don't want it completely tight. I want a little service loop in it. And so I'm just gonna heat it up a little bit, just enough to make it soft. So it slides over 
And then once that's done, I'm going to rotate my swivel that way, slide the hose over, and then I'm going to tighten it down with the 5 16th nut driver. So I always try to get my uh, little nut there where I'm tightening to where I can get to it if I ever need to. So sometimes if you're installing this in the truck, you might want to install this up that way uh, because it's facing you. So always install it where if you have to service it, it's easy to get to these little hose clamp things. Not inside or whatever, but right there. So that's all tightened down. So now on the ho garden hose reel, when I hook this up to a water supply, it's going to feed the water through the hose reel, through the swivel, and to the tank through the Job float valve. Okay guys, the other thing I really like about these Job float valves or the general pump float valve, either one, is that versus the Hudson float valve, which I have in my hand, you can see the bottom of the float valve comes down quite a bit. So you lose quite a bit of water. You can see where my fill is right now on using the Job float valve. And I'm just above 90, say 92, 93, something like that. This is a 100 gallon tank. When I use the Hudson float valve on the same tank, I would get at most probably about 80 uh, gallons. So either one, the Job or the general pump one, allows you to get more water into your tank. It gives you a few more gallons of water, which helps to uh, prevent the risk of you running out of water sooner, um, especially if you're using an eight gallon per minute machine. So um, I have noticed that on the Job and also the general pump float valves that we uh, don't run out of water near as much. Um, of course, that's all depending on how much you're using open flow uh, when, you're, when you're cleaning or like using an open ball valve or whatever. Zero degree tips, those are, of course are going to cause you to exhaust water. But as long as you've got water continually flowing in to the tank and you're stopping and all that kind of stuff, you're going to get, um, you should not run out of water. Again, depending upon the amount of water flow you've got coming into the tank. So. Not only does the, uh, these other two, the Job and the General Pump, uh, provide more water to the tank, um, and they're much more reliable, but it also gives you much more volume of water to hold in the tank, so you're not losing um, as much water. So. Okay, guys, so I told you about, uh, I was going to talk to you about Uniseals. Probably for about the last year, year and a half, we've been using uniseals for the top of our tanks instead of uh, traditional bulkheads. The reason, one of the reasons we did that is because on setups like 12 volts and it's in the King Slinger, what happens is if, you, if you're using a traditional bulkhead fitting, which is like this, Here's the half inch, and then here's the and you've got so you would have a bulkhead fitting like this that you have to tie, uh, pipe dope, and then you've got a uh, hose that goes over here, a hose clamp, and then you've got either a drop tube or however you get down into the bottom of the tank. And so basically, what happens is that creates one, two, three, four, four or five different areas where you could develop air leaks. So what we went to about a year, year and a half ago on all of our builds, and even on mine, I tested them a little bit before that to make sure I was going to be happy with them before we did them on builds. We went to these uniseals. And so we used two different sizes, inch, let's see, half inch, which would go into the same size hole that you use, which is the inch and a quarter hole saw. That's what you would use for the half inch. You need to make sure that you're using the right um, hole saw for the right size gasket. Fortunately for the half inch as well as the three quarter, it's the same exact one. It's a 1.25 or one and a quarter 
hole saw. Okay, and so what happens is this allows us just to slide our hose through here so that we do not have to use any type of bulkhead fittings and this makes a real tight seal for uh, three quarter inch or half inch hose depending on what size unit seal that you're using. So I'll show you that on the truck here in just a second. But that's what we've been using for a while. So uniseals are great. But the nice thing about them also is for whether you're using a half inch hose, which is what I use on a Kingslinger, or if you're using three quarter inch, some guys for some reason want to use three quarter inch, you can use that three quarter inch uniseal. But both of them, the bottoms of the gaskets, both of them are the same exact size and both use the inch and a quarter, 1.25 or inch and a quarter. Um, hole saw. We even have it marked on there, Uniseal, so that we always know. Okay? So, Uniseals are a great option for your soft wash systems, even for downstreaming. When we use it for downstreaming, we actually run a piece of half inch hose into the uh, Uniseal, probably about that long, and then we run quarter inch hose through it because the quarter inch hose that we use does not fit through the quarter inch uniseal so that's why we used a half inch okay guys just to give you a little idea of the uniseals and how we use them this of course is the king slinger that is set up for uh, this truck build and so we've got one that's going for our bleach we've got one that's going over here to our water tank then we've got um, our downstream for bleach like i said we use a half inch ho uh, hose just a little piece, just a few inches, just so we can run the quarter inch hose down through the bottom. Um, so that's how we do the downstreaming hose because like I said, the quarter inch uh, uniseal fitting will not fit. Um, the quarter inch hose won't fit through the quarter inch uniseal. So that's why we do it this way. And so we've got one for that. Um, then we also have our vent hose for our bleach tank. We actually have a vent for our water tank as well, um, but we just let it come out the top. That's the one I was telling you when I was using the uh, Hudson float valve, the water would just start coming up out of here. The reason we do that is because these tanks are sealed. These lids are sealed, they do not breathe. So we have to make sure the tanks are breathing. Make sure the water tank is breathing. And then of course, always vent your bleach tank um, down through the bottom of either your trailer or your truck so the off-gassing can go through that hose and not um, attack and rust out your truck. So that's how we use the uniseals. Um, we really only use, we even use it for the bypass for the pressure washer. And then the only time we really use a bulkhead is for water supply going into the tank. And then of course, water supply down at the bottom for the pressure washer. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. I hope this has been helpful to you. If it has, make sure you hit that subscribe button and then hit that bell so that you get notifications every time I come out with something that could be useful for you. And as always, leave me a question, a comment. Love to help you guys out as much as I possibly can. And uh, appreciate you watching and y'all have a blessed day. Is the enemy of great. There isn't any reason why you can't take your good pressure washing business and turn it into a great exterior cleaning business.